the first things that disappears from my life when my mental health takes a little little dip on the roller coaster of life is anything to do with cleaning and keeping my room like orderly and livable. And when that happens, I need a little bit more um, inspiration or energy or um, something a, a bit more to make me actually do cleaning. Sometimes it's not possible and I'm just gonna have to like wait until my head is back into a better place, but sometimes I can trick myself into making cleaning more fun than it actually is. When I was younger, I would often do this by going into my living room and finding a book called Rule, which is Danish for clean your mess, and it was about feng shui. All I remember is that there was this grid that you would make for your room and it would tell you which parts of your room corresponded to which part of your life. And it would help me clean because I'd be like, oh, I'm cleaning up my health. I'm cleaning up my career. So I thought that I would try and do this now and try and see if I can learn a little bit about it and see if it's possible to apply it to a student space. So whilst past me is trying to clean up all this mess <laughs> in my room, I'll just talk you through this grid that I made over my room that I spoke about. So the grid has nine spots. There's wealth, fame and reputation, partnership, family, Tai Chi, which is like your health and well-being, I think, children, knowledge, career, and helpful people. Each of these areas have certain things that are associated with them. I've tried to write out the names in the color that corresponds with them. So the first area I did is my bed area. And one of the things I read about is that you, if you have art pieces on your wall, you have to make sure that they're hung up correctly, otherwise it can bring the energy down. And I had this poster on, over my bed, which was hung up a little haphazardly. So the first thing I did was to fix that. Then I changed my bedding from the blue bedding that had been on it to this purple bed sheet thing. And then for my little bedside table, I put some plants on it because they grow and I would like my wealth to grow. And I also put this little cauldron thing I have with some coins in it to try and make a little money putt or something. A lot of what I read about was placing everything with a purpose. And then in the lower area, I put my botanical tarot cards because again plants they grow and the box is purple so i was like that seems like a good fit next thing i did was my desk which is in my chi area which is yellow and i don't have a lot of yellow so instead i just focused on making my desk in a commanding position which is a position where you can see the door but you're not in line with the door and you also don't have your back to your window. At first I was a little nervous about that because I thought it was going to take up a lot of floor space but it actually turned out quite well. Next to it is the partnership area where I put everything I own which is pink and I tried to make everything very symbolized so I have a heart pillow that my girlfriend got me and this little um, frame that she filled with milestones in our relationship. I stuck up um, pictures of me and my girlfriend and hung up this plaque I got from my brother which says I am the best sister. Then in my children area, which I don't have any children, but I also read that they could be joy and I, I do want joy. I try to focus on making it as white as possible and place things that bring me joy. And things that bring me joy is Harry Potter. Harry Potter brings me a lot of joy so that has been destined to be a little Harry Potter station. My career area I couldn't do much with but I had previously hung up this 2020 wall calendar and also put up this uh, YouTube planner which actually turned out to be the perfect spot for that because YouTube and video things is part of my career. I'm currently editing the video and I waffled a little bit so I just want to quickly say that there's a couple of areas I don't show. It's basically because I couldn't really do anything in them because of the positions I didn't really have the colors so if I'm skipping things it's because they're not that interesting to talk about basically. So this is my new room. I'm actually surprised with how well this worked especially the desk. I must say when I read that I had to put it in a commanding position I was like that's not gonna happen because it's gonna take up all my floor space but it actually works really well. My living space is so much nicer now and just waking up this morning and looking out into my room was so nice. I feel like there's a better energy in the room whether it's because I've cleaned it or because Feng Shui <laughs> 
Whether it's because I've cleaned it or because the Feng Shui is better, I don't know. I guess time will tell. Obviously, as I said in the beginning, this is just a very brief overlook. I'm just scratching the surface of what this is. So if you want to look into Feng Shui yourself, you can have a look at the articles that I read to help get me started. And then maybe that can be a good jumping off point for you to do your own research and kind of figure out some more about it and try and see if you can use these principles to adapt your student space into something that feels a little more right and is a little little better. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it inspiring. And of course, as always, if you decide to feng shui your room because of this video and you upload any photos or anything like that to social media, please don't hesitate with tagging student life in it. I'd love to see what you guys do with your spaces. And of course, subscribe, comment down below if you know, have any thoughts on how you clean your room or if you've had experiences with feng shui. And until next time, I hope you have a great, wonderful day. It's full of calming energy. Bye!